Well, I love making things. That's kind of why I started. I love creating things. And I know that I've, I bit off more than I could chew. And I'm still dealing with the consequences of that 13 years later. But at the root, I really like raw materials. I like wood and stone and wool and basic things and turning them into things that are functional and beautiful. It started off being like a really idealistic like 22 year old who wanted to save the world and be completely self-sufficient. So I've been here for 13 years ish and Mag's been here for maybe nine or 10. I mostly I run a nursery now, that's what's happened. And we also have a homestead with orchards and animals and gardens, but there's definitely been a lot of different evolutions of what we've done here. Every year is different. If I start back from the beginning, I mean, we've done off-farm working. I still work off the farm on some part-time level that varies incredibly. We've done meat animals, milk cows, vegetable selling, and we've done vegetable selling within the context of a box program. I've sold tools, I've sold forage tools from the shop. I mean, the main thing, the main joke, like when you're on a Gulf Island where we are, is that you have to have six jobs to make one. And that's not very efficient, but it's kind of like all that the market bears. So the allocation of the land is important to have a market for what you want to actually produce. It's one thing to like want to grow a bunch of fruit trees for yourself, but then to actually have the foresight to say, I want to grow these fruit trees because I have a, a guaranteed place to sell the product that comes off of them. Not a lot of idealistic people think that way, and I sure didn't either, but I think it's a really good way to think. I think when you're in that phase of dreaming about creating utopia, I know for me I had such little practical experience that there was no way I could envision the things that would be involved with it. I thought I'd sort of be camping out with my fruit trees, you know? I didn't think about plumbing and truck batteries and all the tools, all the infrastructure. I mean, building buildings is a huge amount of time and money to create housing. I think that's been one of the biggest learning curves for me is that whole thing. So this is the first building I built with no previous building experience. It's like post and beam with chip slip or straw clay. That's what it's called. It's like a super heavy, dense um, infill between the between the timbers. Kind of like cob, but cob is load bearing, and this stuff's not load bearing because the load's on the on the timber frame. We lived in and out of here for a few years. It's definitely a few years. I lived by myself here for a couple years, I think, and then when Meg came, we lived here for a while. When I started that building, all I had was a chainsaw. So the first beams I literally cut with, with a chainsaw, just freehand. Yeah. That took several years, because I was working for money too. It's 10 by 16 with wood from the property. I put a green roof on it, um, but we kind of jokingly call it the brown roof, because it's brown most of the year when it dries out. Yeah. <laughs> I did things backwards. Most people, when they move to the country, they build a house and then they like, you know, colonize their yard and plant their orchard. Whereas I started planting and gardening and keeping animals and then building small buildings before I actually started building the house. So I prioritized the trees, basically. That's what happened. My main business is selling fruit trees and nut trees and berry bushes and basically perennials that make food. So this greenhouse is where most of that stuff is produced. And right here there's um, highbush cranberry, a very rare form of chestnut called a chinkapin, that's a bush chestnut, pomegranates, pawpaws, autumn olive, gumi, hascaps, currants, prune plums, sea buckthorns, rosa rugosa, mulberries, white mulberries, black mulberries. <laughs> there's probably a hundred different kinds of plants in here. I started just because I wanted to grow trees and I couldn't find the trees I wanted to grow as I started sourcing weird trees from other places. And that turned into a business gradually. It wasn't something actually very intentional, but of all the things I do, it's the thing I feel the best about because for me, it's a real service to distribute diversity in food bearing trees. I'm not getting rich, but it's enough to sort of be a part-time job for me. I think my ideal was like decoupling from the industrial system and like growing food and producing our own fibers and shelter and all those sort of, you know, everything at once. Um, and I think to some degree we've succeeded, but we're still tied. We're still tied to the system. It's a, 
ultimately it's actually like the end result of that thinking process for me is a little bit cynical or pessimistic because I think I've only gotten this far in 13 years. I think trying to do this has actually increased my footprint okay, really? for, for 10, 15 years. And only now are we at the point where maybe it'll start to shrink back down again. But without capital, change is hard. It's hard to build things without capital. Yeah. And I've been lucky that I have had things donated and gifted and loaned and that we have woofers and interns every year and we also have friends who come back. Like Lindsay lived here for a while and she's been coming back and forth for six years and I mean beyond my own personal motivation and energy and like drive to do things, if I didn't have those outside influxes of help from people who actually cared, it'd be impossible. Looking back over my experience here, the thing that I really underestimated was how much everything costs. The costs are definitely hard to overestimate. Going back to the land isn't cheap. It's not going to be a cheap process, you know. I thought once I had land and I could do what I wanted, I'd be like home free because I had to have no expenses, but it doesn't work. The good thing about this lifestyle, which I don't call it a lifestyle, but the good thing about my life is that it's very seasonally variable. So it's definitely like uh, not monotonous. I'm a little trapped to be honest. Yeah, I am. But I also really love my trees and they're kind of like my kids. Watching them grow and being able to be here when each one of them produces and new ones produce. That's a big draw for me. And I like my business, I like the nursery. I think for me the feeling of trapped has more to do with like economic reality, of not having a lot of economic freedom as a landed person, you know, as basically like a peasant, you know, we don't have a lot of freedom. I can't travel where I want, I can't buy what I want. But that being said, I and we are totally privileged to live in such a beautiful place and we eat better than anybody in the world, you know, on any given night. So. It's still good. I tend to be a negative person, but I can also recognize how good we have it. Yeah.